If you're anything like me, you listen to a lot of podcasts. It seems like everyone's got one, and there's no shortage of information out there about how to start a podcast, making better recordings with a podcast, how to get everyone to listen to your podcast, blah, 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 blah. But if there's just one thing I'd like all podcasters to learn, it's this. Use a high-pass filter. Now, to be fair, I don't blame people for not knowing what a high-pass filter is, especially if it's the first microphone you've ever owned and you just now learn how to plug it in. Plus, the button is usually labeled with just this, and most people look at that and go, I don't know what that is, so I'm not going to touch it. But I hear even seasoned podcasters and YouTubers making this mistake. So I'm driving home in my car, screaming out loud to no one who can hear me, Oh my God! Use a high-pass filter! So, what is a high-pass filter? And why does the absence of a high-pass filter turn Mr. B into a raging lunatic? There are several factors that go into making a great-sounding voice recording, like acoustics and a well-chosen microphone and mic placement. But there are a couple of other enemies of recording that need to be tackled, mechanical vibration and plosives. Mechanical vibration can be caused by touching the microphone stand or footsteps or bumping the desk that the microphone is sitting on. And the fix that most people recommend for this is a shock mount. And yes, a shock mount can help, but one, they don't completely isolate all mechanical vibration, two, they're expensive, and three, they practically require a mechanical engineering degree just to get the mic in the damn thing. And side note, if you ever want to see an otherwise calm, patient, and rational engineer completely lose their shit, watch them as they attempt to replace the rubber bands on their Neumann shock mount. <laughs> Plosives are the explosion of air that escapes our lips when we pronounce consonants such as P's. The obvious cure for this is a windscreen. Now, most mic manufacturers will tell you that the built-in windscreen on the mic is sufficient for plosives and will also not color the sound. Well, the accuracy of these statements is going to vary, and the only way to know for sure is to test it for yourself. But in my experience, you will get a much better result just ditching the windscreen altogether and using a pop shield. Now, you can buy these things, or you can make one that's just as effective with pantyhose and a coat hanger. I thought this video was about high-pass filters. You haven't explained what a high-pass filter is yet. I'm getting there, I promise. But even after all these precautions, you can still have issues with low-frequency rumble. Right now, I'm not using a high-pass filter. I'm popping my peas and there's some mechanical disturbances happening off camera that are being picked up by the mic. Now if you're listening on your phone, you probably don't notice anything because your phone can't produce anything below 100 hertz. And this is why a lot of people miss this. These low frequency problems are in the subwoofer range. So if you're producing your podcast with a pair of little computer speakers, you won't hear it. But for people listening in their car or full range audio systems, it's driving them nuts with the constant thumpity thump. In fact, it probably sounds like the cones are ready to come flying out of the speaker cabinets. So let's fix this, but we don't need subwoofers. All we need to do is turn on the high pass. Now I'm using a high pass filter. The rumble is gone, my peas aren't popping, and it didn't affect the sound quality of my voice. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, finally. What is a high pass filter? It's a simple equalizer that eliminates all the low end energy below a certain frequency. Is that like a bass knob? Mm, not quite. The bass knob on a stereo is what's called a shelving EQ. As you can see, as I turn down the gain, I'm reducing the energy in the low frequency range, but not eliminating it. You can see how the response curve goes down, but then levels out, like a shelf. A high pass filter eliminates the low frequency energy below the cutoff frequency, which in this case is set at 100 Hz. Actually, calling it the cutoff frequency is inaccurate. It's called the 3dB down point, and you haven't even talked about slope yet. I know, I know. But one, I'm talking to mostly beginners here, and I'd rather not put my audience to sleep. And two, no one really gives a sh It's called a high pass filter because it's cutting the lows while allowing the high frequencies to pass unaffected. It's also called a low cut filter, a rumble filter, or a low end roll off, all mean the same thing. And like I mentioned earlier, sometimes it's just labeled with this symbol, which is nothing more than the frequency response curve of the filter. Now don't get that confused with this symbol, which is a low pass filter or high cut, the opposite of a high pass filter. Chances are you'll never need a low pass, but here's a fun sound design trick. Take some pink noise, add a low pass filter, set the frequency at 100 hertz, and bam, instant spaceship engine noise. What a nerd. So now that we know what it does and why it's important, let's talk about where to find the high pass filter. Sometimes you can find it on the mic itself. On this Audix USB 12, it can be found underneath the mic. 
And on the Shure SM7B, a favorite for many podcasters, it can be found on the back, which may or may not be covered up by the switch cover plate. In the instruction manual, you can see that putting the switch in the down position will activate the low frequency roll-off. You can also find a high pass on your input device, like your camera or the input channel of your mixer. But if you didn't have a high pass filter available during the recording process, or you simply can't remember if you used one or not, you can always add one in post-production. In Adobe Premiere or Audition, you can find it by going to the mixer window, adding a plug-in, and setting your cutoff frequency to around 100 hertz. But I would only do that for your microphone channels. Don't add one for the music because you don't want to compromise the low end response of your music. But on your voice, there's nothing going on below 100 hertz that needs to be there and it'll clean up all the garbage that comes from popping peas and mechanical vibration and your rage filled listeners who listen on full range systems will thank you. Okay, that's it for now. And as always, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Hope you're all staying healthy and happy. See you next time. Worst episode ever.